Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about another myth, but I'm quite sure that uh, you already know a little bit about this method and it's theoretical and the mathematics behind it. But what I'm going to present here is a Python code that implements uh, this method for a BERT function. Actually, this is a function in here. Which is defined uh, here, just as, as you see, it's like only has two variables, x and uh, y. The so code is written in this regard. Of course, can be implemented and like more extended to include uh, n number of variables. But this is how the function will look like. So as you see in here, uh, we we have kind of like a local minima. But this is, there are like two points. Two points that uh, both of them can be considered global minimum. Uh, okay. Well, let's go back to the, uh, the code. Uh, the code is written here, actually. Let's import some very simple libraries. And uh, the Nelder mid is implemented here. So the function, the first step is defined. And there are a couple of other functions written, specially designed for uh, this Nelder mid. And, uh, and the thing I would like to note is that you normally don't see in the literature is a constrained version of um, Nolder mid because Nolder mid normally is implemented for unconstrained versions, but in here the previous one function is subjected to this constraint, which limits the choices that we have. But it's kind of interesting how how, how one can deal with constraint as well. So we can utilize this uh, for future references. Uh, what is implemented is actually you can choose many different initialization. For number mid, you need three points. That's how it begins. It's kind of a concept of simplex and 2D triangles. And if you look at this triangle, we have chosen this three. Okay, we have absolutely no idea uh, what are these points. We just have chosen this. Uh, and here is a triangle that's plotted here. The function is three plots, it plots these three points. In this in this counter plot. Okay, so this is uh, the initial values, and um, we can now dig into the uh, optimization itself. But uh, just to mention that we have one function that sorts out these three points. We evaluate the function f in this tree. Uh, so basically, we have three points. And according to uh, the function bgw, bgw, okay, what are just bgw? This is the best uh, point. That means the fb is actually lowest, so it's smaller than the other. G is actually good, so this is fg. And we have the worst point, so we are doing the minimization. So of course, this is that means that the, the F evaluated in W is a uh, worst one in here. So that's how we show this through the code, and maybe in some literature you will see similar notations. Very good. Uh, so with this, uh, we can go to step by step. This is just to show what's going on, but this is not the general algorithm, it's just one step or one iteration of the algorithm. So what happens in each iteration? Um, first, the R and M are calculated. So I'm in here, R and M. What is R and what is M? So we don't have to worry this all given as a function so for example this is this function m is the mean of best and good 
and R is actually calculated according to the parameter that you have as input alpha. Default is one and is equals M plus alpha in M minus W. This is a general definition of this uh, function and it's how it's cal calculated through the algorithm. Uh, next, uh, when you calculate R, it's a very important point actually, you have to check to see what is FR in comparison with some other points. So if it's better than good, if F uh, evaluated in G, so you go and check to see if it's better than B or not. If it's not, you just simply update your worst points. That is uh, the objective of each iteration of this algorithm, to find a new W, right? Uh, so in here you can just, uh, what is project means here? Project is actually you project back R, uh, considering the constraint to the possible choices because your set is limited, it's not unconstrained version. So uh, if R is outside that defined domain, you just project it back. This is also given in one of this uh, function here as uh, project. You just give it one point and check if, uh, if it's not in the domain, you just project it back. And so you have your W, but what happens if this FR is actually even smaller than FB? That means you are moving toward a very interesting direction, correct direction to uh, minimize your function. So, what you do, you will extend more. And this calculation of point E is also given in uh, def call E. So you just give RM and value of gamma. So how much you want to go further, it is defined by gamma. And you check if this new point, which means E, is better than your best. If it is, you just project it back and you will have your new point W. Otherwise, just have the R, so nothing to worry about. Uh, this is first case if uh, your F in point R is smaller than G, but if this is not happening, we have a couple of other choices. So if still this R is better than your worst point, you just update your W with projection of this R. Otherwise, if it's not better, you have to check two new points, C1 or C2. So you check C1, if C1 is bet doing better than your... Uh... So yeah, uh, in C1, you just check another point uh, and see if this new point is doing better than... Uh... W. If yes, you just check C2, which is another point. Uh, this is given in call C2 function here. Uh, and so you check if this F evaluated in C2 is better than your W. You just update it. Even you don't need projection. If not, you just use C1 to update your worst point. If none of this applies, you only left with one option, which is called shrinkage. You will shrink your triangle with these two. And then, uh, congratulations. If uh, this is the end of iteration, this will repeat and repeat it until the convergence. And convergence here, you can define it by many different ways, but one way is actually applied in here is to calculate the difference between uh, evaluation of F in the best point and the worst point. If this is smaller than, for example, 10 power minus five, you just say stop. We already uh, have reached in a desired point. So let's dig in and see how this algorithm is actually performing. So we have the initial values. You see it in here. Okay, and then one step or one iteration of the algorithm, you see that uh, what happened, this is the worst point. Let's show it in here, okay. 
So this is uh, sorry about that. This is a uh, your worst point, right? And this is uh, for example best and good. So this is the M which is between these two, and you will calculate the distance in here. Of course, not directly. Hopefully, and this is called D, and you go that much more, for example, to here, and then you will have R, and you can uh, just check the E if this is better. But for this case, we just use R because uh, the other condition doesn't apply. For example, you expect triangle, something like that. So this actually was happening in the In here, um, okay. Let's clean everything up. So this is the initial value, and below we have, uh, yeah. So that we are actually going toward the minimum point, which is really interesting. So let's see what will happen in the next iteration. Oh, we see that a shrinkage happened actually. So we didn't move, but this triangle became smaller, which is very interesting to have as one step. And then we will have, for example, updated the point of W in R. And in the next iteration, this will go on actually. For example, this we have. Uh, contraction, this triangle becomes smaller and we see it slowly, but surely we are moving toward uh, the minimum. And in this way, on the way this uh, triangle becomes very smaller, as you see, and compare it to the very beginning, which is that's how the Nolder myth works. The idea behind it is to become smaller and move forward toward the minimum point and this will continues of course until the convergence reached for this uh to see it quickly of course uh, the code implemented using a while function so it just stops when the criteria is met and we can see all of these triangles in one picture here it is so we can see that and we can, for example, evaluate to see what is F in this best point that we have at the end. Here it is, minus 106.78, which is actually global minimum. And we can even take a look at B. So congratulations, we found the global minimum. You can explore the code and use different starting points, but uh, I will just share code with you. So that's up to you to check everything, to use other F. And even if you want, you can extend the code for N, whatever N it is, 3 or just double 10. But don't extend uh, too much. I don't think it will be a very powerful as the other algorithm if the N increases too much. Okay, thank you very much for listening.